hearts tonight. Let's worship the Lord by singing Bow the Knee. Bow the Knee. Let's stand and sing Bow the Knee. <laughs> What a privilege to come into God's presence Just to linger with the one who set me free As I lift my eyes and see his awesome glory I remember who he is and bow the knee Bow the knee He holds the power of creation. With his voice he spoke and all things came to be. Yet he hears each simple prayer I bring before him. When I humbly seek his face and bow the knee. Bow the knee. Bow the knee. King of all the ages, bow the knee. God alone on his throne, see him high and lifted up and bow the knee. Kneel before him, all adore. I think that's becoming a favorite, don't you? Well, it is a good song. Welcome you that are online. Thank you so much for joining with us tonight as well. Let's go ahead and bow our heads with a prayer. Our Father, it is a joy to be able to come and worship you and to willingly, humbly bow before you. Lord, you are so worthy. I thank you for that. Thank you, Father, for the Lord working in our hearts and our lives. Thank you for uh, loving us. Thank you, Lord, for giving all that we have to do what you would have us to do. Bless us tonight once again. Bless your word as it goes forth. I ask in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Our verse for the month, First uh, Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 13, goes like this. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Now we're about to sing 224, hymn 224, Holy, Holy, Holy. We're singing the first, second, and fourth. Falling down be 
four. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. down to the brinks of all hell to heaven's golden strand I stand amazed I stand Saved me and bought me, I stand amazed. When I imagine in glory that day, when all of heaven stood still, as God incarnate. Savior of man died upon Calvary's hill. I stand amazed. I stand amazed of the love that has sought me Save me and bought me, I stand amazed. Thank you, Brother Miguel. Appreciate it very much. Take your Bible tonight and turn to the book of Ephesians, please. Ephesians chapter number 6. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter number 6. <clears throat> the Bible reads, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Are we in the same place? Taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith we shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for the precious word of God. And Lord, I pray that as we focus on this particular part of the uh, soldier's outfit, Lord, I pray that, uh, Lord, we'll be encouraged, that we'll be challenged. And in our daily lives, may we not forget to, get, to take the shield of faith. Lord, help us to uh, have your will and way in our lives. May we, Lord, 
obey what you say. And Lord, may we see you work. In Jesus' name, amen. The shield of faith. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 5. Of course, the one of uh, very familiar, but also a very favorite one of mine is simply says this, Trust the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. As long as the soldier has his shield, he felt secure. And as long as a Christian has faith, he is safe. You see, for a soldier, the shield was quite important in the respect uh, it was big enough to cover the vital areas of the body part, uh, the heart and, and uh, those other places where if, if uh, uh, hurt in any way, it could end everything. And, and so a shield was, was used to protect most all the body. It was big enough to where it would do that. And, and so as long as they had their, their shield, they were more protective and they, and they felt more secure. You know, as a child of God, sometimes if you and I are not careful, our faith, our faith in the Lord, our faith in what God says can wane. And as a result of that, doubt and insecurity fills our lives. And so tonight I want to just remind you about this particular aspect of the soldier's armor. Something that you and I on a daily basis as we go about our day, if you and I are not careful, we'll leave it at home, if I may say it like that. And so without a doubt, the shield of faith, may we take it up. May we use it tonight as we ought to on a daily basis. Let me remind you about a few things concerning the shield of faith. First of all, tonight, the shield of faith is a very, it is very resourceful. In other words, it constitutes a protection over every part of a soldier's body. As it can be turned in every direction. It is a very vital part of the Christian life. Just like a soldier... Uh, when you're going into battle or when you're facing an enemy, that, bit, that shield can be turned in every direction and it can be used in, in, in a viable situation so that it might protect you and, 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 and help you and, and survive even. Folks, I tell you, the Word of God tonight is so, is so resourceful in the respect it is, it, is, it is vitally important that as we trust what God says, as we trust what, uh, uh, as far as who He is, I tell you, it applies in all, all of life and no matter what you and I face and no matter what you and I come in contact with. And even though our enemy uh, does everything he can to discourage us and to beat us down or whatever the case may be, I tell you, we can trust in what God has said. No matter, how, no matter how difficult, no matter how hard it may be, truly the shield of faith is resourceful. But not only that, the shield of faith is also ready. James chapter 1. Take your Bible and turn there, please. The book of James in chapter 1. <clears throat> Notice what the Bible says there. James chapter number 1. James chapter 1, notice if you would with me in verse number 21. The Bible says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. You see, the shield of faith is ready. In other words, it is ready to do what what uh, we need it to do in our lives. It is available. It is, it is there. It is something that, that truly, no matter, no matter what you're doing, no matter what part of the day, the, 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 the shield of faith is something that is 
ready for us. You know, tonight, <clears throat> the Bible says in James chapter 1, Wherefore, laying apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. But then it goes on and says this, But be doers of the word. In other words, it's not enough just to be saved, but to believe what God says. Can I tell you tonight that no matter where you're at, no matter, no matter what you're facing, can you, do you know that you and I can believe God's word? It, it, doesn't make, it doesn't make any difference. No, you don't have to be in church to believe God's word. You don't have to be with certain people to believe God's word. I'm just telling you that no matter what you face, uh, it is always ready to do its job. You don't have to be in a certain place. You don't have to be in a, with a certain person. The shield of faith is ready. And so for you and I to believe what God says, no matter what, no matter where, I tell you, it's ready. It's there. You just need to take it up. You just need to use it the way God has intended for, for us to use it. But be you doers of the word and not hearers only, Deceiving your own selves. The value of believing what God says is vitally important. The shield of faith. This morning when you got up, did you take it with you? The shield of faith. Believing what God has says and, and all that he has said. Believing in that. Did, did you take it with you, if I may say that spiritually speaking? Believing it, because I tell you, life is so full of obstacles and, 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 and difficulties and all of those things. But I tell you, folks, how we need to believe what God says. It is resourceful. It is ready. Number three tonight, it's also reliable. It really is. First of all, we can count on it. We can trust it. And we can lean on it without hesitation. You know, the shield of faith was, was or the shield uh, for a soldier, it was used in many, many ways. Uh, it was something that, uh, you know, uh, they could use it to protect themselves. They could use it to, to lean on if they needed like a crutch or something like that. They could use it to, to uh, uh, help as far as, as, far as uh, uh, protecting themselves between uh, an animal or whatever the case may be. Truly, it was quite reliable. It had many, many functions. It was something that they could count on without a doubt. Can I tell you, you and I can count on the Word of God? That, that it is reliable. You don't have to wonder whether or not God will keep his word. We don't have to wonder whether or not it's true. It is true. Now, yes, I know that there is an enemy today that, that we face and, and it, it is constantly telling us how that we cannot rely upon the things of God. I tell you, they're even attacking the word of God. In other words, you know, and I'll, I'll say this tonight, um, somebody had asked me this week uh, what kind of church we were. And they specifically said, are you a King James only church? I said, yes, we are. Folks, that's not by mistake. That's by design. There's a reason why. Uh, and, and so I says, we are. And so I said to this, this man... Uh, and sort of in lieu of his question, then I, can I assume that your church is not? And he says, no, we're not. And I was thinking to myself, though I did not say this to this man because I did not want to offend him, but I says, you know, I thought to myself, would that not be confusing? I mean, uh, this man said, you know, well, whoever gets up to preach they don't know what translation they're going to read from. I'm thinking, wow, you know, that, that would, that, I, not out loud, but in myself, I was thinking that would be confusing. I mean, what if you didn't bring that translation to church with you that day? And boy, the problem is so often is that when, when the, these modern translations... 
boy, they say all kinds of things. And uh, I mean, they say all kinds of things opposite to another translation. I mean, it, it, it is a major problem. And, it, and I tell you, if they can get to the Word of God, if they can get to and change it to say whatever they want it to say, it can become a major problem. It really can. Folks, I tell you, we ought to take seriously what God says. And, and I will say this, and uh, you, ought to, you ought to seriously uh, look at the translation issue uh, if you have questions. You, you know, talk to me about it. But the, the problem is, so often, a lot of times people will go to another translation... And before you know it, they've gone down a, ra a rabbit's hole that, that will take them everywhere but in the wrong direction, for sure. And so, and so we use the King James Version around here. And it's the only thing we use. Everyone that preached from this pulpit or everyone that teaches in the Sunday school class, it's, it's a King James. And there's a reason for that. There really is. And, uh, and the thing about it is, so often... <clears throat> Uh, you know, you can rely upon what God says. And we believe, based upon the Word of God, that this is what God says. And so we're going to trust it and we're going to believe in it. It is, it, it is a resource that is reliable. We can count on it. We can trust in it. We can lean on it without hesitation. You know, and spiritually speaking, that is, that is the struggle, is it not? You know, Proverbs 3, 5, I mentioned a while ago. You know, when you practice that verse on a daily basis, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not upon thine own understanding. Boy, we like to lean on our own understanding, don't we? We feel safe when we lean on our own understanding. We think we know the way better. But as you and I grow in the Lord, we begin to lean less on us and more on Him. We begin to trust what God says in His Word. And, and, and that's the way it ought to be, Christians. That's the way you and I ought to be when it comes to how we live our lives, when it comes to our relationships when it comes to all these things, when it comes to how we deal with even in business life and all of that, it, you know, the, the, the principles and the dictates of God's word ought to guide how you and I act and think. And, and so it's, it's, it's leaning less on us and leaning more on the Lord or on the truths of what God says. It's reliable, folks. It really is. It will prove itself over and over again. So I want to remind you to pick up the shield of faith. I want to remind you and encourage you that, that don't leave the house, don't, don't go through life without it. That's how important it is. As a soldier of Jesus Christ, it is resourceful, it is ready, it's reliable. But number four tonight, it's also restraining. It is. <clears throat> In our text tonight, it says this, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, I've never had fire, you know, darts thrown at me. Um, I'm very thankful that I haven't. I will tell you a story, though. I did have a BB gun once that I used to shoot my cousin. Now, I'm, I'm just a kid, so don't judge me too hard. We were just playing like kids do. I don't know what you called it back then, cops and robbers or cowboys and Indians. I know that's, that's so politically incorrect and all that stuff, so I don't even want to say anything about it, but I will. Anyway, we were playing, and we were hiding and shooting at each other, and we had some rules. We had these BB guns, 
And so we were using them to shoot at each other. I know, it was stupid, but anyway. But we were only allowed to pump the gun one time. Well, I saw my enemy up by the barn, and he was kind of high up, but he was far away. Well, my BB wouldn't reach that far. So what does a normal person do? Well, you got to pump it more than once in order to get it there. So I did. And I nailed him right in the hand. And it brought some blood. And our game ended right quickly. Uh, I don't know if we ever told our parents what happened, but still, uh, you know, Thank God we were just playing. But we do have an enemy. Now, I don't know if he's shooting BBs at us, but he is throwing darts at us. Fiery darts. These are darts that are designed to take you out. These are darts that are designed to hurt you, to, to stop you, spiritually speaking. Folks, do we have to... Make a list of people that have been taken out. You know what I'm talking about? A list of people that, that we've looked to and, and we've loved, and yet the fiery darts of the wicked have landed. And it has, it has taken people out, spiritually speaking. But can I tell you how, how vitally important the shield of faith is? Because, because, you know, I want you to realize that the devil doesn't care who he's throwing his darts at. So please don't misunderstand me. Don't, don't, don't think, well, he's not going to throw them at me. Yes, he will. As long as he's, as, you know, as, as, he wants to destroy you. And if you're planning on living for Jesus, I tell you, he's going to do everything he can to, to take you out. And so this shield of faith, though, it has the ability to quench. In other words, to put out the fire. It has the ability to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Not just some of them, but all of them. You know, I'm so very, so, so, so very appreciative of, our, of our, um, our, our memory verse for the month of April. Because it, it, it actually uh, tells you and I about that same ability. In this respect, it doesn't make any difference what temptation that confronts you. God has the ability to make a way to escape. That you will not, that you'll be able to bear it, that you'll be able to hold up under the pressure, that you can make it through. But this shield of faith is also vitally important that it can quench the fiery darts that are thrown at you spiritually. Doesn't make any difference what it is, it doesn't make any difference how many times your shield of faith, the faith. Uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ and taking what he says as viable and trusting what God says and doing what God says. Can I tell you, God has the ability to quench the fiery darts that are thrown at you. Not anything that the devil has over God. There is nothing. I love the verse. 1 John 4.4 4. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And this proves part of that aspect of it. God's, God's faith, or, or the, the, the truth of God, is greater than any fiery dart. Can I tell you, there's not a trick, there's not a temptation that, that, uh, that the devil will use against you, that God does not have a way for you to escape. I mean, incredible our God is. And But God has designed it, spiritually speaking, that you and I, that we are to pick up as a soldier this shield of faith. This shield is a shield of faith. It is a belief. It is a trust in what God says. 
and how viable, how, how, uh, how important that is in yours and my life on a daily basis. And so, and yet at times the devil will try to throw some doubts and throw everything, darts at you to, to trip you up and to hurt you and to wound you and all of those things. I wonder how many people are in our congregation that, that have been wounded by the darts. Can I tell you? God is a good healer. He can mend you. He can put you back together again. You know, there's a lot of Christians that just live with a hurt. They're that way. They live that way. Thinking that's the way it ought to be. Can I tell you, it's not the way it ought to be. You ought to receive healing. Did you hear what I said tonight? Listen to me, please. You ought to receive healing. You ought to receive the ointment of God's precious word that it, that it may cool the heat of, of, of the wound and, and all of that and that can, can heal that wound. You see, the shield of faith is important because it is, it is restraining. It can truly keep back I mean, that's, that's the design of a, of a shield. It separates you. It protects you. You know, in my opinion, I was a good boy. But it depends on who you ask, I guess. But I, I was a, what they call a mama's boy. I loved my mama and uh, would do anything for her. Didn't want to hurt her. And, um, but I didn't always do it, do things right. I, I would get into trouble. And, and my mom was a redhead, and so... She didn't have a problem showing that temper that she had. And I tell you, it didn't take much. My mom would show displeasure and I would just melt and say, I'm sorry, mom. And I'd do whatever it took to make it right. But can I tell you, though, something else that is amazing to me? Though I did not, I didn't understand it at the time, and that is this. Even when my mother wasn't around, I would be out at school. I would be out on the on wherever I was. This normally was I was I was in high school. But I can remember this very day. On two occasions, my friends got me or was trying to get me to sneak out. I'm not going to ask if any of you have or not, but uh, I don't want to embarrass your mother. But on two occasions, I had a friend, you know, well, you know, you could sneak out. And we could leave and go do this and not get caught. And without my mother being there, I said to my friend, I don't think so. I'm not going to do that. He says, well, no one will catch us. And I still said to him, no, I better not. No, because if my mom finds out, she'll get really mad. So I didn't do it. On another occasion, I had had this guy, and I don't know if I call him a friend or not, but he said, hey, let's go get some beer. I'm in high school. And... um, I says, no, better not. Why? Come on. He even tried to throw the the religious card at me and say, you know, well, what are you, a goody two-shoe guy or what? And I says, no, I better not. Now, at that time, I didn't say, well, my mom don't want me to. I wasn't going to do that. But in the back of my mind, guess what I was thinking? If my mom bounds out, she's going to kill me. Can I tell you? Though I did not realize it, you know what was happening? The fear of my mother 
and displeasing her protected me from what could have happened. And I tell you, I, I, didn't, I didn't understand that at all. I didn't know that it was actually happening, but it was happening. But can I tell you, with that same scenario, that when you and I take the shield of faith and we hide behind it, and we believe it, and we trust it, and we, and we take it everywhere we go. Can I tell you what it will do? It will protect you. It will guard you. It will separate you from the enemy. It will do that. It's, it, it's designed to do that. When you and I believe God and trust God and obey God... What happens it, it, is this, it protects you. I tell you, you know, there's one, that's one reason why parents can be at least content and at peace, knowing that even though they cannot be with their children 24-7, yet if they teach them the truth of God's word, God will protect them. It's true. <laughs> well, I don't want to get into that, but I tell you, what a blessing when people follow God's word. What a blessing it is. It is in more ways than one. Can I tell you that the shield of faith is restraining? It keeps back the enemy. It sure can. It separates you when you stand when you take up that shield of faith and you're on one side and the enemy's on the other side. Stand with the shield of faith because if you're not careful, the fear of what people think can get you in trouble. Trust in the shield of faith. Believe in what God says. The fear of being different <laughs> Can I tell you, folks, the Word of God will make you different. It will. The Word of God will cause you to think differently. And as a result of that, you will act differently. And as a result of that, you'll deal with people differently. All because of the Word of God. And as a result of that, I tell you, you may stick out like a sore thumb. And the temptation is, is to kind of cow down and to give in. And, and can I tell you, without a doubt, that the, the, the shield of faith can protect you from that. Hmm. Please don't raise your hand. How many of you like to be in control? It's a common issue, for sure. I love to be in control. I do. No, thank you. I'll drive. You just sit in the back seat. Or, no, I don't say that, but that's how I think sometimes. That's okay. I'll drive. And when I don't drive, I feel so, <laughs> oh dear. And I'm, I'm literally pushing on the floorboard because I'm afraid they're driving. But can I tell you, as a child of God, I have to learn to let him control to let him be the one in, in charge. And guess what I have to do? I have to follow. I have to trust him. I have to let him be the one in, in control. Because that's the way it should be. I don't know about you, but people like us who, who like to be in control, we feel uneasy. I mean, come on. If you apply Proverbs 3, 5... Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. I'm getting nervous already. I mean, here we go. You ever, ever tried that, that game? It's called a trust game. And, and uh, you know, you kind of fall back and someone's supposed to be there to catch you. And uh, that's okay. I'm not doing that. At least that's how I feel. Because I know I don't trust people. I mean, that's, that's just my nature. That's eh, it's okay. I'll just keep my eye on you, wherever you're doing. You know, uh, that's, just, that's, just, that's just a lot of, like, like, like most people. 
And so, the, so God saves our soul and, and, he, and he wants to change us. And he says, hey, you can trust me. And we're thinking, yeah, but I'm not very good at that. But we can trust him. And so when you and I, in taking this shield of faith, it's saying, God, I will trust you. God, I believe in what you say. And I'm going to stand upon it. I'm going to, I'm going to walk in it. Even though there are many people may make fun of me. Even though by doing that, it will make me different than everyone else. That's okay. And even though I won't be in control. But I'll have the shield of faith. And I'll stand behind it. And I'll say, God, you be in control. And I'll trust what you say. And I'll trust what you do. And what you say to me. And I'll obey. You see, the shield of faith, it's just one aspect of the armor of, 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 of the Christian but folks, it is a vital part of not only protection from the enemy and what it throws at you, the fiery darts. But may I remind you, first of all, it's resourceful. It is ready. It is always ready. It is reliable. You don't have to doubt about it. Come on, let's pick it up. And it is restraining. I promise you, it'll keep you away from your enemy. The shield of faith. Would you bow your head tonight? Every head bowed, every eye closed. You that are online with us tonight. Have we forgotten... To pick up the shield of faith. Have we entered the day. Wondering. Doubting. About the things of God. Oh would to God that we would take the shield of faith. Come on pick it up. Stand behind it. Use it. In your life, maybe tonight God's spoken to your heart. Some of us need to take it up. You need to stand behind it. What are you doing standing out there in the open forever for the enemy to, to strike you? Come on, let's get behind the shield of faith. Let's get behind God's word. Let's get behind what God has said. Maybe some of us tonight need to do that. The piano begins to play tonight. As we go into the week, I wanted to remind you that there's a resource that we have. There is a part of the armor that we need to pick up, the shield of faith. You might say, but preacher, I have a lot of doubts. Can I tell you the Word of God can deal with those doubts? Get into the Word of God. Father, I pray tonight that you would have your will and way in this service. Lord, remind us of how important the shield of faith is. That no matter what I face, no matter what, is, what I'm confronted with, Lord, help me to stand behind the shield of faith. Help me to trust you and trust your word and Lord help me to stand upon that and not trust in my own ability or my own ways but in you and your word have your will and way in our hearts tonight I pray in Jesus name amen as we stand tonight brother Dave lead us in a congregational and you do what God would have you to do tonight but sing with us come on as we go you weary and troubled.
What about it tonight? You may be afraid, fearful of what, what may come. May I, may I encourage you to pick up the shield of faith. May I encourage you and challenge you to stand behind the shield of faith. Stand behind what God says. On Jesus, full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and Well, I pray and trust that as you leave tonight, you'll not forget the shield of faith. And I hope and pray that God will protect you as you go through this week. And let's come back refreshed and ready to go once again as these doors are opened to worship and to learn and to pray. Uh, don't forget about our Wednesday night service, 7 o'clock. We invite you to come and be with us. Gather together with God's people as often as you can to be challenged and encouraged for the fellowship of God's people and let's major on the things of God. So let's rise up and let's do what God would have us to do, okay? Hey, don't forget about the message that we preached this morning concerning uh, as a church rising up to, to have... Uh, to be what God would have us to be. And, and we encourage you to be in prayer one for another uh, as well this week, okay? All right, let's be dismissed and we'll pray. Father, thank you, Lord, that we have such resources. And, and Lord, we thank you that we can trust you. And, and Lord, where would we be if it were not for your amazing grace? And so, Lord, encourage us tonight, help us to always pick up the shield of faith. Help us to use it. Lord, help us, uh, Lord, as it protects us from the enemy. May your will be done tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed.